and welcome. This is Kevin, also known as AWOL. And today we're working on a rather chunky bracelet. This was from the photo number 19. This thing has like 20 strings, I think. Yeah, it's big. It took a while. It took quite a while. In fact, the speed for this is sped kind of way, way up. Um, It is primarily a off-white um, and two sets of variegated strings. Um, again, I don't know where these variegated strings came from. They don't change colors really fast, but they do, they are kind of cool. They are really neat. So one is a very dark brown that becomes red, and the other is a sort of a orange-yellow combination. Um, I would love to help you in case you really like this one. I'd love to help you to know where they came from, but I honestly do not recall. Um, there was some sales going on. I bought a bunch. Wasn't sure when or how I would use them. This pattern kind of came along and it was just like, you know what? Good chance to actually use some variegated. However, it's got some points where the two lines cross each other. And I think yesterday we kind of talked a little bit about that and how you can't necessarily get it to be when they cross to match up as well as you would like. And then you have to make choices. And, and that actually happens with this bracelet. So, um, when we get to that, I'll try to point that out to you. As far as segmenting it, again, I really tried my best to try to make sense of it because it has some over under things. Um, the ways I go about picking one side versus the other might not make sense at first, but then when you see I'm opening up a channel to bring a one for a long path or whatever, it might make more sense. So it does at points feel like concentrate on the left or concentrate on the right. And then something changes or whatever you it's because of that. Um, because it's supposed to, the pattern itself kind of makes it look a little bit Celtic without having the borders to it. Normally with a Celtic design, you have like two lines and you can see the over-unders and you can see kind of what's going on. This one, it just implies and you just see what's the inner channel of it. And then you can see like it skips a spot and then you kind of it implied that it had gone underneath. And then when it comes back up, and stuff it's it's a cool use of giving this kind of an illusion thing it's it's really fun i i do like that a lot um and the colors i really like how this one turned out um it would be fun to do this with like a very dark background but the red that we used because as a brown that brown would have been lost um, had we gone with a very dark background, despite the fact that yellow is so closer to the white or whatever, there's still at least enough of a contrast that it doesn't feel lost on this. So this, this was a really good combination. If I had used some other variegated string, like replace the red and brown one for something else, then yeah, this could have been really, really cool on like a black or a very dark color, dark gray or browns or whatever. That could have been fun. But yeah, this is... This was pretty neat. Um, like I said, pretty big. Oh, did you see I just set off the three strings? That was so that way I would know when that dark one turns in. So there are points in here where, and I kind of knew this. I think we talked about this in the pattern making phase. That There are some elements of this where you have to kind of count how many stitches down or how many strings to leave off of the end. So this, to that totally had happened in there. And that, that's the part that kind of makes it a little bit more tricky. Other than that, not a bad thing. Um, again, I try to keep it consistent with bringing 
the the background colors just out in nice even rows that kind of thing um but yeah if, the, if anywhere was going to have a mistake made it would be on the rows that only come out partially and getting that count wrong that would be the spot i would say that would be the most likely to trip somebody up um but yeah overall not too bad you'll see so like that orange where those two kind of came together that wasn't too bad the one on the left hand side was starting to change into the darker and then the one on the right was already dark here though it's very light on one side and it's dark on the other so you it would have been nice if it had been more of a blurred line and slowly kind of came that like they the, the both were on the same page and they're not and again when it comes to variegated strings you don't necessarily have that kind of control over it it just it just is what it is so yeah so yeah it's just a very yellow for the top part of that and the other part is very very orange they don't cross over very often which is sort of a good thing and it's not the end of the world if it doesn't match up perfectly it's just a personal preference perhaps or i mean i do think it matters but it's not again it's not the end of the world it's it don't get freaked out if it doesn't come up perfect you don't have to scrap the whole thing most people probably won't care but uh yeah Um, yeah, so there's li little things, little areas like that little come in and out. Yeah, there's little spots where you have to kind of follow the pattern closely, make sure you don't flubs it up. Um, and the whole like this yellow going over top and trying to keep track of all of that while everything else is going on does get, it is a bit confusing. It is a bit much, but that said, again, it's a really cool looking bracelet. It's worth the effort to actually make it. Honestly, I really do like it. The, uh, the reds are going to come in and they're going to make that little, it kind of looks like a hook. It looks like, a, you know, like a, if you turn it a bit, it's maybe like a J or like a candy cane or something. I don't know. But um, it does make it interesting. It does, it gives a lot. I'm holding the bracelet. If you wonder why I keep looking down, it's uh, because I'm looking at it and seeing how, like, it's just really, really cool. And you see like the brown ones have really kind of gone into becoming more full on red at this point. Um, the one from the other side is going to kind of ease its way into becoming a solid red. It's one of the strands is turned red and the other one is still brown. So it kind of gives that marbled effect, which is makes it interesting. It's cool. Um, hang on, just need a, need some coffee. But yeah, uh, if, as long as you're not a beginner, you'll probably have a pretty good time with this one. If you're really new to bracelets and changing directions is a little bit of a problem and you're not used to having the free range of choosing whatever direction you want to for things this could be a challenge um and you'll get there give yourself time it happens honestly it takes 
a little while before you get comfortable with these other bigger things. Because this is, again, this is like, you know, 20 strings, right? 10 on either side. I'm pretty sure, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this, this is a chunky, chunky bracelet. Very time consuming. And you can see here, like, the red and then the marbled one. You have to kind of pick which side. I think I had the marble one come in. Kind of made kind of more sense because that was, like, the longer part of it. Again, it was a executive decision thing, like, pick which side made more sense. Um, that yellow coming to where the red is and changing directions makes those easier because you can see it on the pattern. It'll, you can you know when to do it. It's when it just kind of comes down and you have to count how many to do it that becomes a little bit more difficult. So that's just uh, just how it is. It's, it's one is easier than the other. Um... Yeah, so then the the yellow kind of stays to the outside. It kind of like almost frames in what's happening with the reds, which is kind of neat. It's like, it kind of gives it almost like the two things are sort of linked together, right? Because the the way that the red has come inside of the orange and the orange is all around that. And then another red is starting to do its thing inside of all of that orange. It's it's really cool. Like kudos to whoever made the pattern in the first place. Like that's that is really cool. And again, I have no idea, right? I just had a photo and I worked it out from that photo. So I had, had the photo for years now. And so I have I have no real way of actually figuring out. And if you do like a image search because it wasn't actually, it's like a screenshot as opposed to actually having the original picture. If I do an image search, it'll just basically show me other bracelets. It won't take me to the, who originally had made it. Um, so again, I have no way of knowing. But yeah, you can see I'm just kind of cranking along, trying to kick out the longest rows possible, and yeah. And now at this point, they the the red ones actually both ended up being very red, which was perfect. Makes it look like it's exactly how that was supposed to be, spot on, awesome. In fact, it's mostly solid red for the rest of it. It starts to go brown on the left hand side, but that's way towards the end. So yeah, the orange is still ever changing, which is super, super cool. At least something's happening through it that's uh, giving that effect. Oh, we're past the halfway point. Hi. These videos end so quickly. If I'm not careful, I will totally forget to thank my Patreon supporters as well as my YouTube members for making these tutorials possible. Without their support, I really probably wouldn't be able to do half the things that I do. Um, being monetized you would think woohoo you know that's awesome because you see youtubers like mr beast making millions but um i am i am not it's it's really it's not very much in fact i'm kind of thinking about making a video to show what that is so if you guys are interested leave me a comment and uh i will actually share with you what uh what i make so Anyway, yeah, so the these middle squares, right, in between the the big chunks, the middle squares, I just brought those to the right. It didn't matter um, kind of which way I could have chevroned it, whatever. I just brought it to the right, fast and easy, um, trying to get it done, basically. It's... It's kind of neat on the back because it's it was consistent and you can kind of see it. And 
on the back of the bracelets, if, if you really kind of look at it, you can kind of get a sense that the two different knots aren't the same and they're not. Um, I tried to do some research on this years and years ago and trying to figure out, I used bigger ropes and tried different things to see how this would work. Um, but they're not quite the same. The, the angles that they go at aren't quite the same. And that's why things can get a little bit dicey if you don't have a consistency, if you don't bring things the same way all the time, it'll, it can get really weird because they, they just aren't the same. So, and I don't, I wish I could explain that better because it really is a thing. Like I'm a hundred percent certain of it. Um, but I don't know how like to scientifically kind of break that down or to do the, the right experiments to demonstrate it. But yeah. So yeah, at this point we're starting to come in towards the end. The yellow is going to make the little hook thing. The red sort of surrounds it. And then, yeah, we're not far away from the end of this guys. Yeah, I, I sped this up pretty fast because, again, it was a really long, it took a while to make. So, uh, yeah, I had to, I think this is like seven times the normal speed. So, yeah, pretty crazy stuff. And then here, like the, the yellows, they're really kind of close. The... The one on the left had a little bit more of the darker orange going to it, but that was okay. It kind of worked out pretty well. The next one, one is a solid orange and the other one's very mixed. So, but it doesn't look horrible because the mix sort of like the first knot, the one in the middle, the darker was on the, on the one side and the lighter one is next to the lighter row. So that kind of actually worked out pretty good. I didn't actually aim for it despite the fact that I could have, um, but it turned out pretty cool. So I kind of afterwards I was like, Oh, I, I could have like really have manipulated the knot if I had wanted to make sure that that happened. So Yeah, I think at this point, we're already, those two strands that are laid off to the side, those are done with for the whole bracelet, and that's why they're off to the side. I keep small clips off of the board where when I'm done with the strings, I can lay them off and let them like hang off of the clip. Um, just makes it a little bit easier to kind of see where I am, see what's happening. Um, you don't obviously have to do it, but it does make things a little bit easier. So it can also make things easier when you have a whole lot of string and you're just trying to work on one little area and this string over here and this string over here is not part of your focus. Having them go off and just laid out and out of your way will definitely help keep your strings from getting in a bunch. Honestly, that's, it's a great way of doing it. If you haven't tried this yet, definitely try that. A couple extra clips won't cost you much either, and you can use them forever. So, well, I say forever. I do have some that I had to replace because they got kind of rusty, but they lasted a long, 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 long time. I kind of wish... I'm not sure even with this like higher def, if you can like zoom in and kind of see like how that orange um, looks on that one little spot that's come, you know, from the center going off to the left. But yeah, that was pretty neat. Yeah, we are almost the end. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. It's been fun. I really do enjoy making these and uh, I, Oh, kind of hope that you guys are enjoying watching it. If you're still here, I'm assuming you enjoyed watching it. So thank you very much. Um, be back again tomorrow with another one. And uh, as always, don't get your strings in a bunch. <laughs>